Everything we have studied until KKT conditions, including KKT conditions. <coughs> and the exam will be very similar to the quiz. Uh, a bunch of numerical problems and maybe a couple of derivations. Well, not a bunch, maybe two numerical problems and two derivations. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Are we allowed to bring the sheets? Were you allowed in quiz one? No, right? No. But the quiz one is Yeah, I think, okay, let's, yeah, I'll, uh, one, one page both sides of cheat sheet is allowed. Okay, we'll get started. Uh, the topic for today's discussion is uh, augmented Lagrangian method. <clears throat> and we are planning to solve equality constraint problem. I want to minimize fx such that hx equal to 0, x is in capital X. And as we discussed in the previous class, we define the augmented Lagrangian LC as fx plus hx transpose lambda plus c over 2 norm of hx square. <coughs> Okay. And the class of algorithms that we are going to study today, uh, we are going to let CK go to infinity. Okay. Um, in this expression, we want to compute, of course, we want to compute x star, but we don't quite know the value of lambda here. Um, however, it is usually the case that if you are solving some optimization problem for a specific uh, application, you may have information about how big or how small lambda is going to be. Okay, so you can, you can maybe guess uh, something that is very close to lambda star, and uh, you can proceed with the optimization problem. And uh, we'll study what happens when you do something like that. Uh, nonetheless, you still have to take CK going to infinity. So to give you an example, when you're solving, whenever you're solving the electricity market problem, so you want to maximize the social welfare or minimize the social cost subject to supply equals to demand constraint, um, you kind of know what the price of electricity is historically. It's not like the price of electricity will go to, go anywhere between minus infinity to plus infinity. Right, you have some idea, rough idea of what the price of electricity is and that would serve as an initial estimate for lambda. Okay, is that, does that make sense? Okay, so what's the first result we have? So I want to uh, do the following. I pick a sequence of lambda k that converges to lambda bar I pick a sequence CK that increases to infinity, and I let XK be argument X in capital X, LCK of X comma lambda K. If xk converges, then x bar is global minimum.
Okay. So initially we have constrained optimization problem where you want to minimize a function subject to let's say m constraints. And you want your set X to be, uh, capital X to be some reasonable set. It could be a sphere, it could be a simplex. Um, what else? It could be some subspace in Rn, or it could be the entire set Rn itself, okay? So if X is the entire set Rn, this is an unconstrained minimization problem and you can use gradient descent or Newton's method or whatever is your favorite method to solve this problem. If X is a convex set, then of course you can use uh, optimization over convex set to solve this minimization problem. So now there is no constraint in this minimization problem. There's no constraint of SX equal to zero in this minimization problem. And of course you're solving for, so remember all the gradient descent examples that we have studied, they all converse to a point that satisfies first order necessary condition. Uh, so whatever you would converse to using gradient descent may not be argmin, but it will satisfy some first order necessary condition. However, this theorem requires you to compute argmin at every point of time, okay? So um, it's a theoretical result, not very helpful, okay? Now, of course, if your Lagrangian is convex function of x and this is a convex set, then you always converge. Any first order method would converge to the global minimum in which case this would be the global minimum. And if xk converges, then you are at the global minimum of the original problem you started with. Okay, it doesn't require hx to be a convex function. Okay, all you require is lck to be a convex function in that case. Any question on this? Okay, so an unconstrained, minima uh, sorry, a constrained minimization problem is converted to optimization over either unconstrained, it's either an unconstrained optimization or it is constrained optimization but over a much more reasonable set. Okay. Now of course when you solve problems, even if you, let's say even if everything is well defined here, uh, and this is convex and this is Rn, so you can use your favorite method to compute the argument. Uh, Remember that any method, in order to compute argmin, you have to run the algorithm for infinite amount of time, right? Because in finite amount of time, you can't really converse to argmin. Uh, but you will get close to the argmin, okay? And how do you know that you are close to the argmin in an optimization problem, in a convex optimization problem, let's say? How do you know that you are very close to the minimum? Yeah. XK plus one. It's not much less than xk. Okay, xk plus one is not very different from xk. Is there some other easier method? Gradient is close to zero, right? So if the gradient is close to zero, it means you are close to the argument. So that leads me to the second result, which is much more useful. And the result is as follows. Lambda k is bounded, ck grows to infinity, and xk is such that gradient L ck xk lambda k norm is less than or equal to epsilon k, which goes to zero as k goes to infinity. If xk converges to x bar and gradient h x bar is full rank, then, okay, we have two conclusions. What's the first conclusion? Lambda k plus c k h x k converges to lambda bar. And two, 
gradient x of Lagrangian x bar lambda bar equal to 0, h of x bar is equal to 0. Okay, so what is the second result saying? I pick a sequence of bounded lambda k, I could just pick something that is constant, I don't care, as long as it is bounded, I let my ck grow to infinity and I have approximate minimum such that the derivative goes to zero. And again I am using minimum but of course we don't quite know just using the first derivative condition whether a point is minimum or not. Well, let's assume that this function is convex, so first derivative is close to 0. So then epsilon k is going to 0. So initially you run your iteration for at, x, at time t equals to 0 or k equals to 0, you run your iteration for 5 times. At time k equals to 1, you run your iteration for maybe 15 times and so on, as long as your epsilon k, which is the derivative, norm of the derivative, that's going to 0. If your algorithm converges to a point such that the point has uh, the gradient of h at that particular point is full rank, then your sum of lambda k plus c k h x k that converges to a value, okay, lambda bar. And what does this value satisfy? Well, the derivative of the Lagrangian, so this is not L c by the way, this is L, okay, so that's, that's important. So this is not LC, this is gradient of L at x bar lambda bar is equal to 0 and HF x bar is equal to 0. So it satisfies first order necessary condition for uh, optimal solution and Lagrange multiplier pair. This is the first order necessary condition. Okay. Let's prove this result and, and, and I think this is, uh, this is an important point. So we, we will prove this point now uh, because it leads to a new algorithm called method of multipliers. Yes. So how do we pick the sequence of lambda k? CK? No. Uh, lambda k. So this lambda k just needs to be bounded. So let's assume it's constant. Whatever, whatever, yeah. You can pick howsoever way you want, as long as it is bounded and not blowing up. Yes? We don't have to assume that x bar is a regular point in this case. So this is, a, this is the definition of regularity, right? H of x bar is, a, is full rank, that's, that's regularity. So all the gradient of h i's are linearly independent. Okay, so what is gradient of x L C C K X K Lambda K? This is gradient of F at X K plus gradient of H at X K
Yes. No, the limit of lambda tilde k is lambda bar. This is the limit, not. Uh, so I'm going to name it as lambda tilde k. Okay. Uh, now, what is it that I want to show? I want to show that lambda tilde k has a limit, right? So in order to show that, I need to get lambda tilde k on one side and everything else on the other side. So how do we do that? Somehow we need to remove this term from here, right, in order to be able to say something about lambda tilde k. So let's do the usual trick we did in the, th in the proof of Lagrange multiplier theorem. So multiply by gradient h. Uh, let me write it as gradient hk. It's just gradient of h at xk transpose gradient of hk inverse gradient of hk transpose on both sides. What do I get? I have, let me call this mk. I have mk gradient of x lck xk lambda k minus mk gradient fxk is equal to lambda tilde k. So can we conclude now that lambda tilde k has a limit? Uh, let's think about it. So what are the hypotheses? Hypothesis says xk converges to x bar. So I'm assuming that xk is a convergent sequence. And I'm also assuming that gradient of hx bar is full rank, which means that mk is well defined for k sufficiently large because this inverse and everything exists. So this is well defined. Now I let xk goes to X, I let k go to infinity. What does mk converse to? Some matrix because all of this are all of these are continuous functions of x. So mk converges to some m bar. Uh, what does the derivative of lck converges to? What does this converse to? Zero, why? That's the hypothesis right here. My gradient of LCK is less than or equal to epsilon K, which converges to zero. So this converges to zero. Uh, what about gradient of FXK? That converges to gradient of FX bar, right? So then this converges to some, uh, some vector lambda bar, okay? I don't know what this lambda bar is, but certainly this side seems to be a convergent sequence. Okay, is the idea, is the proof clear for the first statement?
Okay, so I have proved the first statement. Now for the second statement, I need to show that gradient of L x bar lambda bar is equal to zero. Uh, I guess that's, uh, that's obvious. So as I let k go to infinity, this side converges to gradient of fx bar, this converges to gradient of hx bar, and this, as we have just shown, converges to lambda bar. So the first result, or the first part of the second result comes for free. Okay, now I need to prove that h of x bar is equal to zero. How would I show that? Ah, oh. I remember. Okay. Now I need to show that h of x bar is equal to zero. So I know that lambda k, well, h of x k is equal to lambda k tilde minus lambda k over c k. Right, that's true, okay. So lambda tilde k converges as k goes to infinity, so it is definitely bounded. Lambda k by our definition is a bounded sequence that we started with. And ck is going to infinity. So we have something bounded over something that goes to infinity that converges to zero. Okay. So h of x bar is equal to zero. Yes. So that lambda bar is different from that. No, it's the same lambda bar. Uh, the one at the, on the top, next to the one. Oh, this is different, yeah. This is different. So this is, uh, this is the assumption that I'm picking a lambda k such that it converges to lambda bar. Okay, but I don't know what this lambda bar is. It could be any point in the space. Um, more generally, you can just pick a constant sequence. Lambda k, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, they are all some constant number constant vector. Okay? So if you do approximate minimization at every point of time, uh, such that the minimization is finer and finer, like uh, the approximation is finer and finer as k goes to infinity, uh, and if you're convergent, the point at which you converge is uh, a regular point, then this term converges to uh, some vector, and that vector along with x bar, the point at which your algorithm converges to, that those two points appears to satisfy the first order necessary condition for optimality, okay? So that's the augmented Lagrangian method. Uh, without, uh, So basically what this says is, if you run this algorithm, you don't, so this, this thing is not currently being used, okay? This is just a fact that this sequence seems to be converging to some value. But if you just pick lambda k, which is bounded, ck that goes to infinity, xk that satisfies this, and if your algorithm converges and gradient of hx bar is full rank, uh, perhaps you are at a point, x bar, that satisfies the first order necessary condition for optimality. Now in method of multipliers, 
you pick lambda k plus 1 according to this fashion. Okay? And that gives you a new algorithm, a completely new class of algorithms, which is part of augmented Lagrangian method. <coughs> In method of multipliers, you pick lambda k plus 1 as lambda k plus ck hxk. Okay. Now going back to this method, I can pick lambda k according to this fashion, and I know from the second expression that this converges to lambda bar. So I can pick lambda k according to that expression according to method of multipliers method. I let ck go to infinity, I do the minimization. If my algorithm converges, the next bar is global minimum. Okay. So that tells you that method of multiplier will yield global minimum if you can do the minimization exactly at every point of time. Any questions so far? Yes? How do you pick CK in this method? How do you pick CK? Yeah. So CK, it's easy to pick. You can pick CK plus 1 equals to 5 CK. Okay. Or 4 CK or something like that. Okay, it doesn't matter. Now naturally, if your method of multiplier, uh, if you cannot do the exact minimization at every point of time, all you can satisfy is first order necessary condition and then you have to check for sufficiency condition to ascertain whether or not you are at a minimum or not, okay? And that is always something that you need to keep at the back of your mind. Just because your algorithm converges uh, doesn't mean that you have conversed to the minimum uh, unless you check for sufficiency condition. So either that sufficiency condition could come from convexity or it could come from some other method which is you know, doing a second derivative test and things like that. Okay. If there are no further questions, I will move on to solving an example. I'm going to erase this part. Oh, I deleted this. So lambda k converges to lambda bar. CK goes to infinity, then okay. I want to minimize half of x1 square plus x2 square such that x2 is equal to 1. Oh, x1 is equal to 1. What's the optimal solution here? 1, 0, right? x star is 1, 0. OK. Uh, let's try and solve for lambda star as well. So. We need to compute L of x comma lambda. That's x1 square plus x2 square plus lambda x1 minus 1.
minus lambda star okay Okay, so we can compute lambda star by hand. It's actually a pretty straightforward process. Uh, so I can compute x star and lambda star exactly in this case. And this is also the optimal solution because it's a convex problem. So whatever we found is the optimal solution and the grand multiplier pair. Okay, now let's try to uh, prove a result of this sort. So my augmented Lagrangian is half x1 square plus half x2 square plus lambda x1 minus 1 plus c over 2 x1 minus 1 square. Is this a convex function of x? Right, it's a, it's a convex function because you have a x1 square, x2 square. This is linear, so it doesn't matter. And c is positive, so it's a, it's a convex function. So if I want to do the argument, I just have to check the first order necessary condition because that's also sufficient because it's a convex problem. So what's the first derivative here? So I have x1 plus lambda plus c over 2. No, c x1 minus 1. And then I have x2. x1 is equal to c over, no, c minus lambda over 1 plus c. Okay, so I have xk ck minus lambda k over 1 plus ck and 0. Okay, so the derivation until here is pretty clear, straightforward. Everything is convex, so we don't have to check for second order conditions anywhere. Uh, now let's let's compute lambda k plus one. So lambda k plus one is lambda k plus c k 
HXK What is this equal to? Uh, we may have to do some calculation. So let's do that. This is minus lambda k minus 1, 1 plus c k. Okay, this is getting painful, so I'm just going to look at the book and Okay, and this is CK plus How do we know if this sequence converges, assuming CK is going to infinity? Anyone? Yes. Okay, so he is saying that let, let us assume CK is going to infinity. Uh, this term will go to 0 and this term will go to minus 1, right? So your lambda K converges to minus 1, which is exactly equal to lambda star. Now here is a trick question. Let's assume that CK is not going to infinity. CK is just some constant. Uh, and it's sufficiently large constant, okay? I'm not going to qualify what sufficiently large means, but it's something, some large value. Uh, how do we know whether this sequence converges? So let me write it, let me write it. So one thing which we have already ascertained if you pick lambda k plus 1 in this fashion, in this particular example, we can easily show that lambda k would converge to negative 1, which is exactly the Lagrange multiplier for this original problem. And needless to say, my x star will also go to 1, because your lambda k is bounded, ck is going to infinity, and you have 1 plus ck in the denominator, so this term is going to be equal to 1 as ck goes to infinity. Now I want to consider the situation where CK is constant throughout. CK equals to C for all K and C is large. So I'm not letting CK go to infinity. My lambda K plus one is How do I know whether this sequence converges or not? Divide by C. 
why should I divide by C? So you can say in, in the right hand equation if you divide every term by C, uh -huh. and C is large, uh, then... So let's look at this expression. So this expression is... Uh, let me rewrite this expression. Hopefully that will give you some hints. How do we know that the sequence converges? Any thoughts? Anyone who's taking 5551? Five, You're taking 5551? Five, five, okay. I'm not taking it, but it's a linear system. It's a linear system. So you can just you write out the matrix equation and you can find the convergence. Okay, so it's a linear system. As long as this term is strictly less than one, the sequence will converge, okay? So that's something that people study in 5551, but uh, I think that's uh, very easy to show. Uh, so if this term is strictly less than one, which it is because C is strictly greater than zero, so this term is strictly less than one, therefore this sequence will converge. Uh, so since one over C plus one is less than one, lambda k converges to some lambda bar. I don't know what that lambda bar is. Uh, but what will be the fixed point of this expression? So at lambda bar, the expression is lambda bar equals to one over c plus one, lambda bar minus c over c plus one. Let me write it here. What's the value of lambda bar here? Minus one. Okay. So what's the conclusion? Okay, so there's some, some magic going on here. Uh, I've changed my vocation from being a professor to being a magician. <laughs> okay, so what's the magic here? So we studied uh, this theorem which says that if ck goes to infinity, some conditions are satisfied, then lambda k would converge to lambda star. Uh, we did the derivation and we definitely saw that yes, lambda k indeed converges to minus one, which is lambda star. Now, I made a small twist to this algorithm. I let ck be a constant and ck is large, but actually we don't need ck to be large. All I need is C greater than zero, which is trivially satisfied. I need CK to be large to make sure that this term is strictly less than one, but it turns out that this term is less than one as long as C is greater than zero. It may not be the case for most general problem, but in this problem, it's much easier to see that this term is strictly less than one. Um, so now, since this is strictly less than one, I know that this lambda K would converse to lambda bar from linear systems theory. Uh, which I'm assuming many of you may not have taken, but uh, it's a good result to know. Uh, so this converges to a fixed point. The fixed point must satisfy this expression, and that tells me that the fixed point is actually equal to minus one. So this tells you a good property of method of multipliers, which is if you don't let CK go to infinity, if you pick CK which is constant, your method of multipliers would still converge to the Lagrange multiplier, uh, the optimal Lagrange multiplier. Uh, however, the convergence will be much, much faster if you let CK go to infinity. If you let CK to be a constant, the convergence is going to be much slower. So that's the difference in method of multipliers.
let me write it down formally somewhere. In method of multiplier, pick CK to be constant and lambda k would still converse to uh, lambda star. However, convergence is faster if CK goes to infinity. Uh, and this constant must be sufficiently large. <coughs> yes? Is that lambda bar exactly equal to minus one or approximately? No, it's exactly equal to minus one. So if you solve this expression, uh, it's c over c plus 1 lambda bar equals to minus c over c plus 1. So it's exactly equal to minus 1 here. Yes? But in this example, is any c greater than 0 going to work and will let lambda bar converges to minus 1? That's right. So why are we assuming that c must be a sufficiently large number? So this is, this is a very specific example. It has a very specific structure because of which c, any c greater than 0 leads to convergence. In other cases, you may require C to be sufficiently large um, to make sure that uh, this matrix, so you will, instead of, so in more general cases, this will be a vector and this will be a matrix. And you want to make sure that the eigenvalues of the matrix is less than one. And that would happen if C is sufficiently large. Uh, more generally, I think this is something that uh, that I think all of you should make a note of. So, if you have a system where x k plus one equals to a x k plus b, then this sequence converges. then xk converges to x bar if and only if the uh, spectral radius of A is strictly less than one. Okay, this is a, in general a good result to know. And then x bar equals to ax bar plus b, which means x bar equals to i minus a inverse of b. Okay, I don't know how many of you have seen this result before, but I think it's an important result that you should know. Um, Any question? Yes. So in, this, in this problem, uh, whether lambda k plus 1 converges or not depends on the structure of hx, right? Uh, in this problem or in uh, general? The, uh, in, in general. Then. No, in general it doesn't depend on the functional form of hx. All it depends on is whether xk converges to, whether your algorithm initially converges to some value or not. Okay, so if you look at theorem two that I had written on the board, it requires lambda k to be bounded, ck going to infinity, 
And if xk converges to x bar such that the gradient of hx bar is full rank, then your lambda k plus ck hxk converges to lambda star. Okay. Now, of course, in this particular theorem, you have picked lambda k arbitrarily um, as long as it is bounded. In the method of multipliers, you have a very specific way of picking your lambda k. Okay. But it is inspired by this particular theorem. So uh, we know beforehand that lambda k would converge. In the method of multipliers, yes, yes. Okay. So so far, what you have seen now this this can be also extended to uh, problems with inequality constraint as long as you can introduce slack variables and solve the minimization problem over higher dimensional space. So I want to minimize fx such that h of x equal to 0 and g of x less than equal to 0, x in capital X. This problem is, of course, equivalent to minimize fx. And this minimization is over x and z h of x is equal to 0, gj of x plus zj square is equal to 0, x is in capital X and z, j or z is in rr. Okay, so even though we introduced the algorithm for uh, equality constraint problem, you can turn every inequality constraint problem into equality constraint problem by introducing this slack variable. And you can then uh, solve this minimization problem using either method of multipliers or augmented Lagrangian method in general. Okay, so in the next class, what are we going to study? Uh, we have seen through these examples that all we want to do is create an algorithm that converges to the first order necessary condition for optimality, or to a point that satisfies first order necessary condition for optimality. So if you want to use, uh, so the idea is to construct a penalty function so that if you minimize, if you solve the penalty function um, over a set x, uh, you converge to the point that is feasible, which means h of x is equal to 0. And at the same time, the function is minimized over that manifold. So we will try and construct such penalty, penalty function in the next class. And we will talk about sequential quadratic programming, which is one of the methods for solving uh, problems of this type. Okay, but that is through construction of a penalty function. Okay, that's not something we have done so far. We have looked at barrier method. So barrier is perhaps a penalty for violating the constraint, inequality constraint. And then we have talked about augmented Lagrangian method we, where uh, you add a penalty for violating the constraint. So C over two norm of HX square. You add that in the Lagrangian and then you try to minimize the augmented Lagrangian um, with the uh, penalty going to infinity. Uh, and the problem in these methods is the penalty goes to infinity. So we don't want to have a sequence that goes to infinity in your algorithm because it leads to a lot of algorithmic instability uh, when you are actually implementing it on the computer. So theoretically, everything works fine, as we all know, right? But in, when you start coding manifold suboptimization method, then you kind of realize that there is a lot of gap in understanding. So. Uh, so that's what happens when you implement algorithms where something goes to zero or something goes to infinity. Um, so 
we'll talk about penalty methods and how to construct good penalty function so that uh, you don't have anything going to infinity, but your method still converges to an optimal solution to the original problem. So thank you and have a good break. <laughs>